So my name is Aaron Anderson, and in the last few years, I, I've done some things that some people would say is impossible. I've done things such as climbing to the top of Mount Kilimanjaro, swimming from Sweden to Finland, and biking from Sweden to Paris. And l looking at this picture, some of you also might think that I'm a little bit crazy. But to, to assure you, I'm, I'm really not. You know, this is Trolltunga in Norway, this magical cliff going out over nowhere. And my friend Oscar, he's like this Everest guy, told me that, Aaron, you should go all the way to the edge, and you should do really like this. And I'm like, no, 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 Oscar, I want to survive. So I, I'm just a little bit crazy. And what I want to talk to you today about is how we can all use our story to do the impossible. Use our story to give us energy and to give us mental strategies to follow our dreams. But before I do that, I want to tell you a little bit about my story. And I had like the best childhood ever. D don't my dad look pretty cool in this picture, by the way? <laughs> you know, a while back somebody said like, hey, that looks like Chuck Norris. <laughs> and it, it's me to the left of my dad, and then it's my brothers, Leo and Hugo. And I kind of love this family picture, because can, can you see what, what it says up there? It says, broken dreams. <laughs> like, yes. You know, my mom's really great, but she's not a, don't hire her as a family photographer. Don't do it. <laughs> and and w when we weren't here hanging here, hang out, you know, we even sometimes, as a kid, we even sometimes went to the spa. <laughs> How awesome is that? This picture is taken about a year later. It all started with me being seven years old, going down in the car to my grandparents to celebrate Christmas. And when I'm sitting in the car, I get this pain in my bottom. Three weeks later, I'm at the hospital, and the doctors told my parents that I have cancer. I had a tumor that the size of a lemon growing in my lower back. And about a week later, I'm at the hospital, on my eighth birthday, getting my first round of chemotherapy. After that, a year followed, a very tough year full of chemo and radiation therapy. But eventually, the doctors realized that the treatment wasn't working. So when I was nine years old, I had surgery. I had surgery to remove the cancer, and that surgery also meant cutting a lot of nerves going to my legs, and I ended up in a wheelchair. But what I want to talk to you about today is really how we can use our story to give us energy, how we can use our story to give us mental strategies so we can do the impossible, we can follow our dreams, we can overcome the obstacles. Because reaching goals and, and following your dreams in life, it's all about overcoming obstacles and pushing when it's really hard, when it's really tough. And I would say I have an advantage, advantage, it's such a huge competitive advantage because of my childhood, because of my story. Because when I went through this, I learned how to really push when it's hard. I learned a lot of strategies to keep going when everything was really, really tough. And I, I want to talk about these strategies by telling you a little bit about one of my adventures. This is me last summer. Looks nice, right? I mean, especially when you zoom into the picture. <laughs> the, this is Swedish summer. I got, I got this really stupid idea that I was going to swim from Sweden to Finland. And it, that's a distance of about 37 kilometers. It's 37 kilometers. It's in really cold water. It's big waves. And it's, it's just tough. You know, before doing this project, I Googled it to see if anybody had ever done it before. And when you Google it, you could see that two people had done it before, and one of them had the nickname, the Human Torpedo. <laughs> I mean, that makes you confident, right? And what made it extra difficult was that I was a beginner swimmer. I learned to swim probably, probably about a year prior to this swim. So I was a beginner swimmer, and I was going to do this swim by only using my arms. And I would like to say that what made me able to do this was my competitive advantage. Was my competitive advantage 
that I learned mental strategies to push when it gets really tough from my childhood. And I'd like to teach you three of these strategies today. Because when I was in the water swimming, I, I'd swam about 20 kilometers. I was super tired, I was really cold, and my body started to say, Aaron, stop. And these voices started coming in my head, Aaron, stop, get on the support boat, you know, cover yourself with a warm blanket, drink some soup, quit. And at that point, I knew I could bring up these strategies. I could bring up these strategies to push even more to reach that goal. So let's look at the first one, perspective. I remember one of my first rounds of chemo. I remember being in the hospital. I shared a hospital room, me and my mom together with another kid and his mom. And I remember feeling kind of okay during the, the chemo. But the kid next to me was feeling horribly. He was doing so bad. That gave me perspective. That made it easier for me to go through this round of chemo. I mean, I wasn't really feeling good, but looking at this other kid, you know, I was feeling amazing. The exact same strategy I used when swimming across the sea. You know, I was laying there in the water, I was swimming, I was feeling cold, I was tired. But at the same time, my mom, she was with me on, on the support boat. And her job on the boat was to give me energy, like some power gels, power bars, and, and Swedish meatballs, and you know, <laughs> all, all that stuff. And my mom, she did a great job for about an hour. <laughs> and after an hour, you know, I'm in the water swimming, and I look over at the boat, and I can see my mom, green, hanging out over the boat like this. <laughs> she was seasick for 11 hours. <laughs> so I, I remember being in the water, asking myself, like, Aaron, do you want to switch places with your mom right now? <laughs> and I'm like, no, no, no. And what also gave me perspective was when I was swimming in the water, I could hear my mom sitting on a boat with this blue bucket, yelling, I just want to die. <laughs> that's what we call perspective. And I think that sometimes in life we need to just zoom out. You know, I was feeling really, really bad, but when looking at my mom, I felt great. Mental strategy number two, rewards. I remember being in the hospital after I had surgery, and they were going to take out my stitches. But it wasn't the, the normal kind of stitches. It was the, you know, the surgical staples. And they're really painful to remove, because they kind of got it stuck, so they were really hard to remove. And, you know, the nurse tried to move, and I was just yelling at the nurse. I was super mad, and I was saying, no, I don't, I don't want to remove them. And my mom tried everything, but she couldn't because I was super stubborn. And eventually, my mom got a brilliant strategy. She told me, okay, Aaron, I know you want this radio-controlled car. And to buy that one, you need money. And I'm going to give you $1 for every staple we take out. And I'm like, okay, I can do that. So about 30 minutes later, all the staples was removed, and I got $100. So I tried to use this strategy later in life, because I realized, you know, you need to have a reward when you're pushing really hard. And sometimes you need to have small rewards. And you remember my reward? Meatballs. Every, every 20 minutes, stopping by the boat, I would get one of these Swedish meatballs. That was my reward. Because I had something to look forward to in the water, in the swimming, when everything was tough, when everything was hard. So ask yourself, how can I reward myself when everything is tough, when everything is hard, to keep pushing? Number three, why? Why do we do what we do? When I was in the hospital, when I was going through radiation, when I was going through chemo, it was always very clear why I did what I did. You know, if I didn't do this, my chance of survival would be none. 
But if I did it, there would be a chance. So I had to keep going. I mean, didn't matter how hard it was, I had to keep going. It was the same thing swimming across the ocean. I had to keep going because I had a really strong why. First of all, my, my why was to push my limits to see what was possible, to see for myself what I could do. But the really big why was I did it to raise money for Children's Cancer Foundation, to save money for research so more kids can survive cancer. That was a strong why. That's why I couldn't stop. I had to keep going. I had to keep going even though it was really hard, even though it was really tough, I had to keep going. And that eventually last year, we raised more than $300,000 for the Child Cancer Foundation. And that's a strong why. So think about that. What's your why to do what you do? Why do you do it? And with these three strategies, I managed to do this. Thank you. Reaching the shore in Orland was such an incredible experience. Getting up there, I was so tired, I gave my mom a hug, thanked her for <laughs> being my motivation <laughs> to keep going. <laughs> but what I really want to say with this talk is that we all go through tough times in life. We all face challenges, but how can we use these challenges to give us energy? to give us strategies, and to give us that extra drive to conquer our goals, to do the things we really want to do in life, to see our tough times as a way to get our own superpowers. So I want to kind of end my talk today by saying, let your hard times give you superpowers to conquer your dreams. Thank you. Thank you.